Hello guys and welcome to another video of Red Dragon. This time we are going to, well, do something a little bit different, which is um, showing a Russian 70s deck. This is a Cat C um, deck, which I use in, uh, well, against Cat A <laughs> uh, decks and I get very good results with it. Uh, especially so in Tempidance is really, really, really nice. It's not designed to do breakthroughs and steamroll the opponent in massive pushes. It's actually designed to establish a solid defensive position and start working on from there, slowly gaining the initiative and slowly advancing on the enemy. Until, well, you can actually throw an attack on an enemy capture zone and capture it yourself. So let's go. Uh, around it. Well, first of all, you have to remember that this is a 70s deck. This is a cat C, so I don't get access to the old, the fancy new stuff and magnificent late 90s stuff that you get in a cat A deck. This also means that I'm going to be limited in many ways, but it also means that I have 70 activation points instead of 60, which allows me for picking a lot of different units. <clears throat> and the strength of this deck is combined arms. Um, there's nothing that is exceptionally good at anything, but it kind of synergizes well um, with the units it has. So let's start by logistics. Have a BMD 1K, a very normal APC uh, command unit. FOB, two Ural tracks, and a um, ME6. I'm surprising myself because I, in Wargame Merlin Battle, I rarely, if ever, used chopper supply helicopters. But in Red Dragon, I'm doing it, and they are so flexible. Really, if you need a fast supply, they are so, so, so handy. Next in line, infantry. Now, infantry, um, the line infantry is not really good compared. I mean, everyone is going to run 90s, infantry of the 90s. And against infantry of the 90s, the 70s versions always are very lackluster. So what I decided to do here is to use shock troops as my line infantry, BDB. In uh, BDR 70s with an AA cannon. Now this is an exceptionally strong combination. First of all, the Sretzes, or however it's said, the vehicle provides for uh, very accessible cheap uh, AA cover, which reason has reasonable range against enemy helicopters. And this is really good because I don't get really good AA in this deck. It also means that I have shock troops, which have a bonus in speed and rate of fire, which is exceptionally handy when you are dealing with enemy infantry. I took them in veteran, in, sorry, in hardened and not in veteran. I took them in lower veterancy because I want the numbers. Still, 12 VDBs in Harden are are forced to be reckoned with, and you're going to see that in the video later. <clears throat> Next, I have my Elite Infantry, which is the Space Nuts. I bring them in helicopters for using them in openers. These are extremely decisive units. They eat enemy infantry units alive, and against armored units in forests, they defend themselves really well. The Napalm Thrower is really powerful, extremely powerful. So this is a great unit indeed. Also, it has the bonus of speed because it's elite. So yeah, really handy unit. Going on with the idea of going with shock troops and not standard troops, I have my Morse Kaya Pejota. These are naval units, navy units. They come in a Kia 2070V, which is a very powerful attack chopper with a lot of rockets, and hard hitting rockets as well. They are 80 millimeters. These are 15 strong shock troops, which are really handy for those kind of assaults when you need numbers. Maybe in the mountains, maybe in the forests. You are not going to see me using them in this particular game I'm going to post, because of the fact they came in choppers, and in that particular game I really had a use for the BTR-70. But I do a lot of use of them, and they are extremely good. And finally, ATGM Infantry. Now, we have Gornostrelsky in this deck, but it's the 70s version with the old Metis, not the new Metis M. And uh, the Metis really is lackluster as an ATGM. Uh, not really good um, range, very lacking AP power. So instead I go for the Concourse, which is a proper, extremely powerful ATGM with a very decent AP power of 20. Now, 
you are, th this is other of the things of this deck is in some ways it lacks in ways to deal with enemy e super heavy armor n 1 a 2s challenger 2s leclerc's that kind of stuff so you are going to see how i compensate for that in in other categories next support very strong and very important thing here <coughs> Um, Estrellas for short range, higher missiles and cover. These are really handy, they bring 12 missiles, they don't have a huge range, but still it's a 50% chance of hit, so really good. I bring them in very low veterancy because I really want the numbers. I mean, these units are not as good as others, and they are extremely vulnerable to hellfires from, I don't know, uh, Lombos or, or Apaches or, or Lynx 3s, that kind of stuff because the range is lagging compared with the range of the Hellfire, so I need the numbers. Then as, standard, as a standard AA, um, rather guided missiles, I bring the books. It's not the book M, which you get with a cat A, but still it's a very strong AA unit with a very good range against planes, reasonable accuracy, very good IT power. Now, a lot of people would go for the OSA AKM. However, I think that this unit is, first of all, slightly lacking in range against airplanes, and you really need a range. It's really fast. However, I, I, I don't know. The fact that the um, book is armored is a huge thing. I mean, the, the OSA, as you can see, has no armor. The book has one armor all around. This stands enemy artillery much better, and this stands closing um, bombs much better than the OSA, and OSA is much easier to take out. Um, so really, I think is well, it's up to, to the user. The OSA is a really good AA unit, but I think the book is better. And finally, for artillery, uh, the Huracan. Uh, actually, it's, it's kind of surprising because I think that the Nonas or the... Well, actually, you don't get Nonas in this, in this deck. Uh, the Podnos, the... Um, um, mortar artillery is really good. However, again, is the Uragan is to compensate for the fact that uh, the enemy is going to have better infantry. Even when I'm using shock troops, if you go versus Panther Grenadier 90s, for instance, or Farsing Jagger 90s, which are extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous units, you really want something that can deal with them when they are doing a concerted effort, a massive push in numbers. And uh, this thing, shooting from close range, you can shoot them from the spawn, but they are useless. These things are designed to be shot from as close as possible. They are kind of a shotgun. They destroy so much stuff. And um, yeah, it's a compromise. I usually would go for a mortal, but to compensate for the fact that steel infantry might be a problem for me, I go for Uragans. And they work really well. Tanks. Now, I won't say we get bad tanks, but they are kind of lackluster. Uh, two units of T-64Bs and two units of T-80Bs. Both of them at top veterancy. Now, both are very similar tanks in many ways. As you can see, the armor is not that different. Let's compare them. The armor is not that different. They have an the same ATM, the gun is even, I mean, is even worse in the TADB and in what regards to accuracy. However, the TADB is, is faster, has a little bit more armor, is a little bit more survivable, so it's kind of a trade-off. Um, the thing here is that I want ATM tanks, basically, because I want to deal with enemy armor from the longest range possible. This and tanks stand absolutely no chance against a Challenger, for instance. Um, so I want to shoot those Challengers from very long range and then decide if I want to go in or retire. And these are the two only units that you get with ATGMs in this uh, particular deck because the others don't have any ATGM. So yeah, still they are pretty decent tanks. They are very good for the openers and mid game. At late game, when you start seeing Challenger 2s and M1A2s, they start to be lacking, severely lacking, I would say. But we compensate for that with other things. You are going to see them. Next, Recon. <coughs> One card of uh, choppers, 
pretty much standard. One card of Ratsvetka, uh, standard um, recon infantry in BTR 70s to deploy on the front, that kind of stuff. One card of B BRM one case, which is a hugely, hugely, hugely good asset for recon because of the exceptional optics. And also because it has a pretty decent gun. And finally, uh, one card of uh, Spetsnaz BMF. These are more designed for flanks or to try to infiltrate the enemy lines, or in some cases of very crowded fronts, where units are very close to each other and a special unit would get spotted because he has a very good stealth, the Spetsnaz has exceptional stealth. So now, you, now and then you can infiltrate them into forward positions and they rely really, really, really good information to you. Next, vehicles. <clears throat> now, you start seeing here the trend of going for a lot of ATGMs. Two cards of Storm SS with a Cocon missile, 2,800 uh, 2, meters, uh, 20 AP power. These are really good to deal at low range with enemy armored assets. Now, for the more down-to-earth work, we get a card of Norobs, which are really good because of the very high rate of fire and pretty decent gun. For 35 points, this is a very good unit. And, of course, it's inevitable because this thing is so damn good. The BMPT <laughs> is, is um, the, the bringer of death, is the destroyer of walls, is the king of the wolves, basically. Um, with this autocannon, this grenade launcher, and well, this very long range 100mm cannon, which doesn't shoot, shoot AP, it's only for HC power, is to deal with enemy infantry and very long ranges. This thing is so damn good. So, yeah, one card of those. And one card of, one card of those because I can't get two, because otherwise I would. Um, helicopters, two cards of ME 24 Bs. Um, not really the best um, attack helicopter around, but it's very cost effective. 85 points give you 280 meters 80 gems. Uh, they give you 64 rockets, and the gun is crap, but um, it has armor. It has 10 um, health points. So this is a very durable unit and very useful and very cost effective. So yeah, air. Now, here is a serious problem because you know guys that I like to go with a lot of air superiority fighters. However, the 70s deck of the Soviets don't give you access to very good fighters. Let's put it that way. You have access to a MiG-25P and a MiG-25PD. Both are crap. I mean, 40% accuracy, uh, very limited range. Um, they, they, they can't turn, really. Uh, they have some ECM, especially the PD version, but really, if you are facing Rafals, why take fighters that they are going to die to them anyway? So I don't take air superiority fighters. What I take is a Jack 38 uh, Napalm Launcher Bomber, three of those, really handy to, well, set towns on flames, set forests on flames, organize barbecues and that kind of stuff. Two cars of MiG-27s, MiG-27N and MiG-27. Now, the one of them has much better range. Uh, the missile is pretty much the same, other than the range. And um, the ACM is, is quite better on the uh, MiG-27M. This is essentially 28, 28 AP power. These are to deal with enemy heavy tanks. Uh, usually I don't go for more than one ATGM plane in my decks, but as I said, there's a very big focus in this deck to compensate for the fact that I don't get very good tanks. So to deal with very heavy armor, these are my standard cards. I don't usually use them unless the, um, well, enemy very heavy tanks have been detected. Next, MiG-21 SM. Now this is kind of a cheap throwaway, a fast answer to some immediate threats, maybe advancing infantry. It's only 80 points, it's very dependable. You get two of them, 
and they have 64 rockets which deal really well with advancing infantry on the open, for instance. They also can have a couple of fire missiles, so in a pinch you can use them against choppers. So, not really impressive unit, but useful nonetheless, and also very cheap, so yeah. And finally, the only fighter I have is the MiG-23 ML. They have six IR missiles with very short range, very low accuracy, but I, gav I have them on Elite, which means that this accuracy is kind of much higher than what it seems. Um, it's very short range. I mean, this, this plane is not an air superiority fighter. This is to use against enemy choppers or to surprise enemies that, well, maybe are evacuating close to your spawn zone. Then you call a couple of these and hunt the enemy fighters while they are evacuating. Uh, they are really good at close range because of the six missiles. They fire it, them really quickly, but they, they, they are not going to survive a 1v1 versus a F-15 or an M-16 or a much less a Rafale or a Typhoon. So yeah, that's my deck. So now let's see it in, let's see it in, in action. Now this game you are going to say is kind of a heartbreaker because um, well you will soon notice and and see that we are not going to win at all. However, I did really well in this game. Well, there goes the first one. I I don't get it. People who joined only to surrender, and uh, people who surrendered after they lost the initial forces. Well, whatever. The thing is, I'm going to call for you are going to see it. My initial setup. Two Space Nuts in ME 24 As, which I'm going to use well to put at the front. Two units of Estrellas to give me AA cover. Uh, extremely handy for that. Two units of tanks, T 64 Bs, the cheaper ones. A recon unit, a BRM 1K. Of course, my command unit. And also going to bring a couple um, recon unit of um, Spesnas BVM for well working on the front. And yeah, that's going to be pretty much my setup. So let's just ah oh, well, also sorry, I call for BDB in in Shrek deaths, but yeah, that's pretty much the setup I use. Now I'm going to. Wonder, and I'm going to. You are going to see for a second that I put uh, some ATMs here, but later on I decide against them um, because the T64Bs are enough ATM power at the beginning of the battle, and I also have the ME24s in case of an emergency. So yeah, that's going to be my starting force. So well, let's get the battle started now. Initial orders are pretty much straightforward. I'm going to see one of my teammates surrender. I'm going to send my ME24s up here and unload them. I want to hold this front here. As I told you, this deck is to establish a position, defend it, and, and, defend it, and then slowly advance on the enemy. A treat and the enemy trying to advance on you destroy it and then counterattack slow by slow taking ground um, little by little so my initial forces are going to land here which is a pretty forward position i don't want to defend here because if i defend here they have all this cover and i have this little cover they can artillery all my positions and even try to snipe my uh, cv so my units land meanwhile the units, um, land units are advancing. Now I'm going to call for some units here, some units here, some units here, and some units here. That's the orders I give. However, we start spotting Lynx AH-7s, which means that the enemy is using an airborne deck and is trying to rush our positions really quickly. And that's why you have your Strelas. Because and your Shrekness, look at that, they are shooting at enemy choppers and they are doing really a good job at that. My BRM is already in this position where he's going to spot a lot of stuff. Meanwhile, I move my AA assets, including the APCs, to support my advancing troops and to prevent the Lynxes to do anything nasty to me. So you can see there's a 
Brutal fighting here. Meanwhile, my best best nuts. Are teaching those SAS a good lesson about how to use napalm. There you go. Two shots. Two units of uh, SAS gone. Shrekness are advancing over the links. Here. I know they probably have uh, put some units in this forest. So I'm going to account for that. I'm going to move my Shrekness here. I'm going to unload them and move up. Meanwhile, you can see I'm redeploying my forces. One of my strategies is starting to have problems with the ammunition, so I call for an ME6 to reload it. Meanwhile, the other one is going to deploy to the right and um, hopefully shoot these links out of the sky. Meanwhile, we can see the enemy is already spamming artillery from the spawn, thinking that it's very cool to use, uh, I don't know how many points, maybe 200, to try to snipe my spacenuts. But of course, my spacenuts have moved. I'm not stupid. Um, that's why shock troops are so, so, so good, and elite troops are so, so good. They are so fast. 30 kilometers per hour. Well, one of the stellars gets destroyed by this scorpion. Bad luck, but well. They are so fast that you can move out of the way of artillery really quickly. I deploy my T-64 trying to get those scorpions, but I don't get a line of sight, which is pretty unfortunate. Meanwhile, you can see that, well, I have my ME-24s here back in reserve. My T-64s shoot a couple of ATGMs, they missed to, uh, on this rover Milan. We spot more lynxes coming. So my Strelas probably will have some work here, if they dare to come in and to assault our positions. Now we can see the enemy has a striker, that's an ATM unit and a very good one, deployed at this forest. I would call for my Uragans, but it's a little bit too early. First I want to secure my flanks. So I'm going to put a couple of VDBs here and I'm going to move my infantry up this hill, because I want to cover this... Um, this incoming point here. I want to see anything that tries to sneak past into my flank. I'm not going to advance with them. I'm just, well, T-64s uh, are shooting on the uh, Scorpions. I'm not going to advance with this infantry. I'm just going to hold there. Now we spot a Milan, but I retire slightly the uh, T-64 so the Milan can't hit with the first one. Second ATM misses, and we get the Milan ATM. We didn't get any scorpions, which was quite unfortunate, but yeah, well. Meanwhile, I am advancing with PDBs. Enemy is pulling artillery. This is actually rocket artillery with cluster ammunition in a place where I only have a Strela, so they are welcome. We spot some Grukas. But the BDBs are going to do a really short job of them. Unfortunately, um, some good soul who was from base, I don't know exactly, here, this very nice guy decided that he wanted to get some points out of those Gurkhas when I only had to advance my BDBs to get them. So he starts bombarding this position. However, the only problem with that is that my BDBs are on top of the Gurkhas. So if you are wondering and guessing that they are going to team kill my BDBs, they pretty much are going to. Yeah. I advance my BDBs trying to get those Gurkhas and I'm going to get caught by the artillery in that position. I spot a javelin and I need to get that javelin. So I move forward but yeah, I would have pulled back, but that javelin was, you see, ME2 here. I wanted to save that ME2, but I walk into the line of fire of my very nice ally, and my BDBs get utterly crushed. Anyway, at this point I wasn't happy. Let's see, let's, let's leave it at that. I don't have enough with the enemy that I have to can look behind just in case my own teammates kill me with their artist spam. But whatever. BDBs are extremely damaged. I'm going to pull them back. And eventually bring them there here so they can replenish the last squad which is alive can replenish to 10 health. 
So at this point, <coughs> I'm wondering what's going to be my next move. You can see that here I have a T64 unit, my BRM with the gun turned off. I don't want it to be spotted. And the Strellas in case of one of these choppers moves in. So the next thing in line is to call for my AA. So I bring Strellas. I'm going to place them here. And I bring more BDBs. This time to actually move in the mountain. The first one is I actually decided I wanted to help the space nuts here in case of an infantry push here. So I say send two more instead. And these ones are going to deploy here and send the infantry up there. I also spawn, as you can see, a couple of um, units of two bags each. These are my long range AA and they are going to come extremely handy as you are going to see it later. I also move my ME6 back from this position. The strollers are already reloaded. I'm going to land it behind here so when this book, which is going to be placed here, arrives, I can resupply them when they have to fire their missiles. PDBs are moving up. I'm going to place him, them here. I call for even more strollers to give a proper front cover. Why so much AA? Yeah, well, because I'm spotting all these uh, links to twos and I don't want them to be a problem, essentially. My ally from the left uh, fires the Tunguska and gets one of the Lynxes, but the Toast twos are still there. My BDBs are moving into the forest. I'm already pulling back the only mm, survivor of the mm, debacle of before. We spot a Sea Harrier here. This one is an anti radar missile, a uh, fitted plane, which is kind of unfortunate because I depend a lot in uh, radar guided long range missiles, but I have four of them. So I'm hoping for the numbers to overcome the fact that maybe one of them will get knocked out. Also, I have a lot of bugs. That's why I brought them at lower veterancy to provide for the fact that I'm going to essentially need them to be switched on for most of the time and they might be surprised by enemy CR. So as I'm moving on the front, I send some Ural trucks here to bring my space nuts up to full strength. And as you can see, putting BDBs here was a very, very good decision. Paratroopers moving, my M24s are going to do a very nice Job helping the BDBs clearing them. And there you go. Push stopped. Now, of course, I'm perfectly aware that this was a first try. And I know I have to do, wait for more. So I call for a couple Ural tracks to replenish the BDBs up to full strength. And I'm going to move my ME24 a little bit back just in case the enemy decides to drop artillery on them. But I'm going to keep them still here so they can support any uh, with rockets against any try to advance on this sector. Meanwhile, in the forest I have deployed my BDBs and waiting for the fires to um, go off because I don't want to lose any of my units because they are working into a fire. Now, yes, an another quitter. Elizabeth II, the Queen, which was playing um, a red for deck, Lord not wise, maybe he ha she has uh, turned jackets and now she's communist, <laughs> um, has left the game and now we are three guys less. That's, uh, and then people say that um, Pact is um, underpowered and that NATO is OP. The problem is the players. Uh, the, the red force units are perfectly viable, but whatever. So I'm suffering damage because I'm already advancing my units here as I told you well I wanted to be careful, but I also wanted to advance So I'm advancing my BDBs as you can see I have weapons switched off on off on anything I want to move up to the off to the tip of this forest and then switch off switch on sorry the weapons This way I don't give away my advance before it's too early Before now, my teammate here tries to advance to this forest, he gets one BMP destroyed, but he's going to wipe out 
wipe it out of Purkas, which is really helpful for me because this covers really well this flank for me. Meanwhile, as you can see, my Ural tracks are already resupplying the BDBs. My ME6 are here covering for the boobs, books. And I switch on the weapons of my Estrella to kill one of the A87 toes. Now that immediately triggers a Milan attack from here. So what I'm going to do is to move up my T62. This was a jeep, so I can get it easily with a tank. And I'm going to move a little bit forward. First I get this striker. I move out of cover, the rover Milan reveals itself. I get it out. And now I'm going to prove the enemy forces. Now there's another unit here. There are still scorpions here. So I have already proved it. Time to move back. I lose one of the T64s, which is kind of unfortunate, but I really wanted to see what kind of the kind of defenses were around here. I paid 80 points, but I'm more than compensated for it by the fact that I got two units here and one unit here. So in the end I was earning points. Now this is going to trigger an immediate answer from the enemy in the form of a super etendard. So I move everything into cover. He has no targets to shoot at. And my books are going to make me smith out of those out of that um, super etendard. As soon as I'm you can see I'm waiting, reloaded, it's okay. I wait for the Sea Horrier to move out, out, and I wait for these Harriers to move in. Now these Harriers are going to be a problem because they bring very heavy bombs. And they destroy two of my stress nets, my Strela and my infantry. But I get both of them. So now the th next thing I do is immediately move my books and reposition them. Because I don't want to be get them to be sniped by enemy infantry. I usually would have moved them immediately after after the first shot, but I spotted the Harriers incoming and I wanted them to be um, still to shoot their missiles. These units can't shoot on the move. So, well, I advance them. And now I'm under artillery fire here because my Exceptional ally, which is extremely good, has decided to fire his mortars from the top of my troops. So the counter battery fire is going to fall on top of me. Oh, players. As I told you, this guy was more a nuisance than a help, but whatever. Meanwhile, I call for TADBs to reinforce this forest position. I'm also going to call for more infantry because I have lost every infantry I have here. Your allies are going to move up to uh, resupply units and then especially so to repair these units which have been subjected to the artillery attack. I want them to be on full health, so these trucks are going to move there. I call for even more uh, uh, BDBs here because I'm thinking that maybe the enemy tries to sneak on this area and I have very, very, very little support here. Now, the BTR are moving up, T8 is in, in position, as you can see they are going to move into cover up to the front. I'm also going, um, calling for a BRM1K, which is also going to come into this forest, move into cover and then get here to give us a good look at what's around here. Exceptional optics are a really, really, really good help for us in this situation. And now, yes, another quitter. Ah, the humanity. So you can see, well, right now we are lagging extremely in um, in numbers, but I'm doing pretty fine. And yeah, another quitter. So yeah. We are one, two, three, four, five players down right now. You can guess why we did lose this battle. Anyway, meanwhile, my ME6 is delivering his remaining supplies 
to this URL and soon it's going to take off and go back to base to resupply itself. I call for more infantry to move into this forest to um, take the place of... yeah, there's another quitter. Uh, take the place of the other um, infantry that we lost before. Now ME6, as you can see, is moving back. Uh, well, the situation is pretty much stabilized until the nice guy who has been bothering me all the time decides he wants to quit as well. And so he does. Really? <laughs> so now I think we are only four players against the whole of the NATO force. I spot some movement here so I know what to expect. I know there's something coming. I have my BDBs here ready to for an answer and I call for a Uragan just in case I need it. I'm going to place it yeah right here not with a lot of care but soon I'm going to call it back. At this point I was actually thinking in shooting here but soon I'm going to change my mind. Meanwhile the scorpions are still there I don't know how they are surviving the fire of a T62 64 but they are doing so. But this time with the help of the BLM, they are not going to be able to hide into cover again. And eventually, I'm going to kill them. There goes one, and soon the second will follow. As soon as we respot it, of course. There he is. He's trying to hide, he's trying to evade, but now our three tanks firing. I'm going to reacquire it, and I'm going to kill it. Meanwhile, down here, as you can see, the Uragans are in position. And now I'm also thinking that maybe I want to fire here instead. But for that, I really need to move it back. So in the end, I do nothing. I don't fire here, I don't fire here. I'm going to wait and see where that amazing shotgun effect is needed. In the meantime, I spot two Lynx 3s, which are extremely bad news because these things have uh, 2,800 meter missiles. I move my Spesnas up to see what's here. And uh, well, what's that? I, uh, what's there? It's a Scorpion, some infantry, and meanwhile, more Gurkhas here. MB-24s start firing, but not in time to save the ass of the BDBs. So sadly I'm going to lose them. Meanwhile, the Space Nuts, as you can see here, are giving a hell of an account for themselves and I'm going to actually take out this Scorpion. They are also on fire, uh, under fire from the paratroopers, which is kind of unfortunate. Meanwhile, I spot a Javelin up here, so well, these Mi-24s are in a serious, serious, serious spot right now. So I pull them back, or try to. <coughs> Excuse me. So I call for more BTR with BDBs to uh, help here. My books get a um, Phantom, which I don't exactly know what was trying to do, because he placed fl flames in a place where I have absolutely no troops. They kind of mm, touch a little bit the BDBs, but not a lot. Actually, they are not even shattered. They lost one health, but no nothing more than that. So, okay, I move them into the structures in case. Just in case. And now, look at this. What's this? A massive try to pull a lot of special forces past me. But, yeah, the BTRs are going to do a really good job with that. Meanwhile, the BDBs and the structures and these BDBs are going to take care of these SASs. And of course, I'm not going to leave those, those guys alone. MiG-23s are going to deal with this situation as fast as they can. Well, this is kind of a small bug in the game. But there you see, I destroyed one of them. I'm going to destroy both of them. Meanwhile, BDBs are advancing here. They are going to destroy these AAs and these paratroopers. 
Meanwhile, here we are cleaning up the last frogs. They can't be allowed to survive and to bring more troops into it. I'm going to do one more pass and make sure nothing's here. Meanwhile, here, my BDB is suffering under fire of these paratroopers. SAS and Garkas are being destroyed by my BDBs and my BTRs. My Uragans, as you will see in a second, uh, have moved back into cover. I didn't want them to be spotted and artillery to head to death. Spot an Eurofighter here, but too late to answer my MiG 23s, which were already evacuated. BDBs are going to clear this SAS with no problem at all. And that's the end of it. Now, of course, this doesn't mean they are not going to try again. I'm pretty sure they are going to try to come back. First of all, they try to come back with a plane, but that Sea Harrier didn't have a good, didn't do a good account of himself. All these forces, evac. I call for enemy two because I want to make sure nothing survives here. But no surprise, something actually survived. But it's not here, it's here. Two helicopters are moving into my M6, they are trying to get them. So I scope on a couple of helicopters just in case they land some troops. And of course, my M23 is coming and finish the job. I move my M2 back just in case to make sure no troops have disembarked here. No one did, so I'm free to move my ME24 up here, and I'm going to keep it in reserve just in case I need it. Meanwhile, up here, I'm calling for a lot of VDBs, which come into fire from Milan 2s up in the, in the hills. So I hide them to avoid the missiles, and I'm going to use this VDB to clear that Milan 2. All these BDBs are going to come here and then push into this forest. That's the plan at least. Meanwhile, I bring my ME6 back to resupply my books, which I have relocated after my last uh, fighting. BDBs are coming in the mountains. As you can see. And they are going to finish off these Milan 2 guys. There you go. But they spot more. They are AA units, so wait. Let's destroy that. So I advance with the BDBs. And now you can see why it's so amazing to have 25 km per hour troops. These guys try to retire, but they can't, because I'm in hot pursuit, I'm faster, and I'm going to kill them. Meanwhile, my BDBs down here, I'm moving in here. So I start retiring my BDBs because I want to spot what's in here, because I'm predicting if there was an ATM here and an AA here, probably there will be an AA here. Also, I want to go away from those lynxes, which I'm spotting right now. And, oh, surprise, yeah, there are javelins, and what's this? Gurkhas. They totally murdered the Gurkhas, and they totally murdered the javelins. Now, that's kind of a pretty good show by these BDBs, I would say, at least. There you go, last javelin unit gets wiped out. And now I'm going to call for my BDBs back, and re resume their spot where they have been before. Meanwhile, here, my BDBs are moving into the forest. Now let's see what they find. Yeah, the enemy is really ahead in points by w one wanderer's way. And well, there are some paratroopers here. Which is kind of a nuisance, but not a big deal, because we have a lot of BDBs here, and no matter these units are elite, numbers are going to 
heavy, uh, bring the weight here. There you go. Second unit of BDBs comes into the fight. And meanwhile, my Uragan fires here and gets one and two Lynx trees. I immediately amass my, with my BDBs. I don't want them to be stopped in the same position. I spot two units here. I don't know what they are, but they are in individual, so I guess they are busy goals, and indeed they are. This is still another scorpion. And now a lot of lynxes are coming here, but I have Estrella in this position. Now, lynx 87, this has rockets, this can be a problem, so I open fire with Estrella. And start taking out these choppers. Of course, this brings the attention of the enemy. And he fires with the scorpion. But I keep on firing. Meanwhile, I spot these Kurkas moving behind me. So now we have these Kurkas on the side. And of course, with 50 BDBs close by, I'm going to steamroll over them. I return, cover my flank behind, and uh, destroy them. Of course, these BDBs are attracting a lot of attention, so I'm suspecting that something will come to get them. So instead of moving forward, uh, I move them back and use my uh, logistic tracks, which are down there, move it, uh, them forward because I want to resupply the BDBs and to, well, uh, fill their numbers and um, repair, well, repair, give them health. <laughs> and bring them to uh, top numbers. However, I can spot some Gurkhas coming and this time they are not going to come alone. They are going to bring some friends alongside and that's going to be some kind of a problem. But in the meantime, I'm, well, restoring their numbers a little bit. I spot uh, Lynx AH-1, which means even more infantry. I spot SAS, which are special forces. That's a really bad news because that means elite infantry is coming this way. But I'm doing all I can to bring my BDBs up to full numbers before the inevitable attacks, attack comes. And there it comes first some Gurkhas from the side, go down the mountain. And I answer by, well, trying to move my BDBs and um, cover the tracks and deal with those Kurkas. However, at this moment, another group of Kurkas pop from the side. So what I do is to pull back the tracks and move the BTRs forward. But now the SAS are coming in, which again is really bad news because those are elite troops. And um, yeah, right now numbers are more or less the same, but another two units of SAS come in. And at this moment, I know I'm going to lose everything. So, well, the BDBs did a good stand, did a good job, but they are going to die. Sadly, but surely. So, knowing what has happened here, I would love to give a second try to my Uragans onto that point, but they are still being reloaded after shooting here. So, instead, what I'm going to do is to call from the Terminator of the Worlds, the most dangerous vehicles ever created by humankind since, uh, I don't know, the Side Sariot <laughs> uh, BTRs. Meanwhile, my T-80s uh, deal with one of the group of the Gurkhas that was here, now I spot a striker. I also dispose of him. I'm relocating my books slightly because I don't know if from here they can see them. But I decided to move the T-80s forward. Because this is Striker and this um, Scorpion is all we have been seeing here. We haven't seen anything else. So I think that probably there's not much here and I can take advantage of that with the T-80. And this is the case. Um, you are going to see that these T-80s are going to go in a rampage all over this area. Meanwhile, the BMPDs move forward 
and uh, well now you are going to see exactly why these things are such a beastly weapon against infantry in woods the enemy gets the fire first shot but the BMPDs get the second and from then onwards is game over meanwhile on the side this guy tries even another sneak with even more paratroopers but really by this stage he should have taken the hint that I was not letting him in. BMPTs are, well, just brutalizing everything that's in this forest. The T80s move a little bit here to make sure nothing is around here before moving forward. But my main problem is that now I spot that we are only 1000 points of, well, dying basically and ending the game. Usually I would call for some infantry here, some infantry here, some AA to cover my advance and uh, wait a bit before making my move. But knowing that the game is almost over, I immediately, well, move my assets up and try to kill as much stuff as I can before game ends. Now this is pretty funny because the T-80 gets a helicopter with the machine gun. But I also spot some toes, links with toes, so I pull the T-80s back into cover. Meanwhile, my BPT, BMPDs are moving forward. They are really good against helicopters because of the autocannon. If they are close enough, they can fire on the choppers, and this is exactly what they are doing. However, soon I'm going to fire, find myself in a crossfire with those firing from here, those firing from here, and yeah, I lose a couple of BMPDs, and uh, it's going to be game over. So, yeah. As you can see, well, things are coming to a close and the game ended. So that was game. That was a very good game for me, but sadly all the quitters uh, just ensured that we wouldn't win the game at all. Now seriously, I don't get, I, I, I understand that maybe these two guys had problems with the computer and that the game might have crashed. I have had my, that problem myself. But this guy didn't have a problem with the computer. The problem was his. I don't know why this guy... I don't know why do you join the battle only to quit it. Um, maybe he should... I, I don't know. This, this kind of behavior shouldn't be accepted. I understand that he was losing a lot of stuff. But he, if he is not competent enough to play, at least he should be decent enough to stay and not leave the whole team behind. Also look at this Bao guy, the guy who was shooting my troops in the forest. Well, yeah. Anyway, that was a fun game anyway. I went into the positive pretty much, actually. Almost 3,000 points and uh, 1,145 losses. Not bad at all for a deck that, again, is a Cat A deck and was going... Uh, Cat C deck and is going, was going against Cat A troops. So as you can see, well, the problem with the Pact is no, and the Red 4 is not that the Red 4 is bad. The problem is that the play players are essentially bad. Anyway, this is the kill list. You can see it in a second. And um, yeah, well, remember guys that whatever you want to see, if you want to see a particular nation, a particular deck, a particular specialization or a coalition or whatever, just well, tell me in the video and I'll try to make a video about it. As always, I hope you have fun. Thank you very much for watching and see you later. From the world outside If a bit longer We'll be